Hi guys and welcome. In this video I want to revisit an old video that I made some time ago about how to thoroughly clean your airbrush after a spraying session. And the reason I wanted to do this is uh, despite it being a popular video and, uh, and what have you, the, the general consensus, the, the main comment I noticed on it is that people couldn't hear the audio very well. And the reason for that at the time was I was restricted by the camera that I had, which was tripod mounted, and I was using the built-in microphone on the camera. And I was also right above my young son's bedroom at that time. Uh, I was filming it late at night and I was trying to be as quiet as possible. Hence the reason the audio is very quiet. So now that I've got better quality video and better quality audio, what I want to do is refilm the whole process and um, for anybody that's looking on uh, quick and easy ways uh, to thoroughly clean your airbrush. I, I'll show you what uh, what I would do for a, cl a, fl a clean and flush through if you were changing paints, spraying a few different colours throughout a session and then I will do a full strip down and clean as I would do after every spraying session, whether that just be one paint or several paints that you've sprayed through over the course of however long. Hopefully you'll be able to see how gungy that is. I've been splaying black acrylic Tamiya paint, which is ideal for this demonstration because black paint obviously is the strongest pigment available. So, uh, that makes it ideal for this uh, for this demonstration so let's zoom back out and focus in for you so for a flush through between painting i would take some thinners or cleaner that's appropriate for the painting question in this case isopropyl alcohol squirt some into the paint cup and take the brush that i use to decant the paint from the mixing pot to the cup I recommend using a brush rather than using the back flush method or what have you to try and mix the paint because it just makes life so much easier. You can get the brush right down inside there, give it a really good stir around and, uh, and just get all of that nasty gunky paint out of there. So using a piece of paper towel, give that a bit of a clean and then a squirt through. And as you can see there, let's see, it's, uh, it's good that I'm using black because that makes it very obvious. And then give it another flush through. Now you can see by that point it's relatively clean. This is clean enough to put another paint in and continue to paint onto your model kit with another paint colour. Now we're going to strip and clean the gun completely. To do this, you will need one sheet of kitchen paper, three cotton buds, Q-tips for our American friends, an old paintbrush which I reserve specifically for cleaning the nozzle, a 0.6mm interdental brush, um, pound shop for a pack of six or so. This is the second one that I'm on in about a year, a year and a half maybe. And it's just starting to get um, battered enough that I need to throw this one away and, and take a new one out of the packet. I think there were five or six in the packet. Uh, sharpened um, cocktail stick, I forgot the name of it there just for a quick ream out of the knees, needle, uh, the nozzle to make sure there's nothing left in there. The spanner for your airbrush if it requires one. Uh, some such as Harder and Steenbeck don't, but if it requires one, you need that. A little pot to spray into, I just use an old tin can, and another little pot to put your nozzle parts in to sit and soak while you clean the body and needle of your airbrush and the appropriate thinners. Now, in this case, it's isopropyl alcohol, and I'll also be using a little bit of cellulose thinner, which I'll explain as we go in. And the only thing that differs with this process is the type of is the material that you use to clean the airbrush. If you're using enamels, you would use white spirits. If you're using cellulose or lacquer paints, you would use cellulose thinners or lacquer thinners, as you would call it in America. So that's that's all there is to it. So what we're going to do now is go through the whole process of how I would clean the airbrush after a spraying session. 
So an eyedropper of, uh, of thinners in, in the gun. Give that a spray through to get the worst of that out so that the cup's as clean as possible. And then pop off the air hose for the moment. A quick disconnect makes this very, very easy, but it's not essential. The next step, unscrew the back of the airbrush, unscrew the needle chuck nut and draw it back about a millimetre or two, no more. Unscrew the front nozzle, drop it in the pot, unscrew the other nozzle, drop it in the pot. Let me just turn off my compressor. Taking your spanner, unscrew the main nozzle and carefully pull it off the front of the airbrush so that you don't bend the needle tip and drop it in the pot. At this point, drop in a pipette or two of thinners, making sure that the nozzle specifically is, uh, is covered by the thinners. So that will sit there soaking and clean out. Loosen the chuck nut, push the needle right the way forward and draw it out of the front. Now hopefully you can see there, I don't know how visible that is, but hopefully you can see there, there's little bits of paint on the needle. There always will be. It sticks to the needle more than anything else in the airbrush. This is why you draw it out of the front rather than pulling it back through the seal. So, taking your first cotton bud, saturate one end with the appropriate thinners and get a good dig down in your paint cup, right down to the bottom. You'll see it's picked up a little bit of dirt there. So all the way down at the front and the back, right around and then give that a wipe and then take the dry end, dry that off, discard that. Take your second, oh, helps to tighten your chuck nut as well because that has a habit of undoing and dropping off. Take your second Q-tip and saturate one end and do exactly the same thing again. It'll only ever take two to clean a bowl, provided you've flushed it through and given it a wipe first. You can see that's just about as clean as it will get. And then take the dry end and run that round and discard this one. The next thing you need to do is take your interdental brush and two drops of thinners onto the brush and the bristles will hold that, they're nylon bristles and they'll stand up to all manner of thinners very very well. And then pushing that into the nozzle while it's tilted back a little to make sure that as soon as you touch it it will uh, it will actually draw the liquid into the paint barrel. Give it a good run through and twizzle round and then taking your paper towel Splash that on there and you'll see some pigment. There's always some little bits of pigment that you just wouldn't get otherwise. And then once more, two drops onto the brush, pop it in and run that through again. This time it should come out absolutely spotlessly clean with nothing on it at all as it has done. Give that a shake out. And then take your paper towel, a couple of drops of the thinner onto there, form a cone with the end of that, and then just drop that down into the cup and give it a really good wipe round. And then anything that's slipped back through the nozzle will be picked up by that and make your cup nice and clean. You'll notice there the trigger's fallen out. That does sometimes happen, but don't worry about that. Just Pop it back in accordingly. So, yep, just give that a really good wipe around. And you'll see now that the bowl is clean and also the nozzle that leads, your, your paint feed tube that leads to the nozzle. Your airbrush body is now clean. So you pop that to one side. Next thing we need to do, another couple of drops of thinner on a clean part of the tissue. Take your needle, 
clamp it, rotate it and draw it backwards as you rotate it. And you'll see that that picks up a surprising amount of paint pigment that you wouldn't expect to have caked onto the needle. And this is where most people go wrong when they just flush an airbrush through. They don't realise how much of this rubbish sticks to the needle. And then don't forget to draw the last bit through there. What I do as a secondary measure, and this is not necessary, this is overkill on my part, but it's something that I like to do, is take a drop of cellulose thinner and then just do the same again. And you can hear that squeaking there. That's, that's what's referred to as squeaky clean. That's actually where the name squeaky clean comes from because it means there's absolutely nothing left on that needle. That is spotless. Slacken off your chuck nut, feed the needle through the front of the brush, through the hole in the back of the cup and right the way back and then draw it back into the body so that you're not going to damage the tip when we put the nozzle back on and put that down to one side safely out of the way. Next thing you need to do is take your brush, fish out your nozzle and scoop it up to the top of the pot. You can also use a pair of tweezers just to get a hold of it. Make sure your brush is well soaked in thinners, in IPA in this case, and just give it a good poke through. I'm going to zoom in on this so hopefully you'll be able to see it if I focus for you. So hopefully you'll be able to see there, as I'm poking the bristles through, a small amount of the bristles soaked in thinners, that's actually going right the way through and cleaning out the nozzle. And anything that's loosened, this should help to just shift it if there's anything still remaining in there. So trying to do that and keep it in focus for you at the same time while I'm looking at what I'm doing, which is easier said than done. So the next step, same kind of thing, is take your cocktail stick and just a little bit of thinners and then just push that in and give that a twirl round and just check it for paint pigments. So you're basically reaming it with, with the soft wood. Don't ram it through because you can split the, needle, the nozzle. Uh, so you're just reaming it with the soft wood to make sure that it is clean, which it is. Dry that on the paper towel. If you wish, you can hold it up to a light and just check that you can see through the nozzle. So let's zoom back out here. Take your nozzle and screw it onto the front of your airbrush by hand until it stops. Then take your spanner onto the flats and you're literally, you're not tightening it, you just until it stops against the body. So you're not putting any pressure on, you're not yanking it round. It's not like tightening a wheel nut or, or um, a, a nut on, on a car or something when you're doing mechanical work. And the next thing is your last cotton bud and your little pot again. Dip it into the thinner and then scoop out your air cap. Give it a good reaming with the cotton bud and then the dry end. Check it and make sure there's no bits of paint pigment in there. Give that a dry. Form a little cone with your paper towel and then dry that inside. Screw it onto the front of your airbrush. Do exactly the same with the fan cap. It's quite common when you're spraying with acrylic paints to get a buildup of paint in this fan cap section here. Uh, very, very common indeed, in fact. So don't be surprised if you pull off a lot of paint when you clean that because acrylic paint dries much more quickly than, um, than cellulose or enamel. So uh, it's, it's a very common thing to see. And a lot of people actually take the fan cap off when they're spraying with acrylics, especially airbrush artists. The only downside with that is it makes it much, much easier to bend your needle tip. So screw that back on the front, unscrew your chuck nut and seat the needle. You're literally just pushing it until you feel it stop. Give it a rotation, make sure it's not sticking. Tighten up your chuck nut. 
tighten on the back of your airbrush and then just give the whole airbrush body a bit of a wipe. Check that you've not got any errant dribbles of paint down the side of your cup, which is quite common, especially if you're like me and you, uh, you're too lazy to use the lid, which uh, I don't recommend if you're using a very full cup because I've, dr I've spilt so much paint that way, it's ridiculous and I know I, know I should use it. And that's your airbrush spotlessly clean. And as a final little test, what you can do is take some isopropyl alcohol, put just enough in to cover the base, and then take our airline. I'm not going to switch the compressor on, I normally would, but uh, there should be enough air in the tank, but um, the noise is just going to be disruptive otherwise. And then take your can and just press the air. You shouldn't see anything coming out. Pull the trigger back a little bit and you should start to see Start to see it spray and the more you pull back the more it should spray. Another way you can check this, you can do this with water as well if you want to. Another way you can check this, spray it against your hand and you should just feel the cold air but not see anything. But as you draw back you should start to see the alcohol actually spray out, pool on your hand and then evaporate. So that's it. Simple as that. That's your airbrush, spotlessly clean, nothing fancy, no ultrasonic cleaners. About 10 minutes in total and you can put that away and then you know that you, the next time you pick it up to paint whether that's in an hour or tomorrow or next week or next month or in two months time or whenever this airbrush will be spotless it will operate correctly the plunger will work it nothing will be sticky and it will be spotlessly clean and flawless ready to spray again so that's the the entire procedure when you finish spraying for the day give it a thorough clean because this is where problems rise from is when you've blown it through and think you've cleaned it and people say oh use this this airbrush cleaner and blow that through instead of what have you it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you blow through you can put cellulose thinners through there but the fact of the matter is you will always get some little bit stuck if you don't strip it and clean it properly uh, so yes that's that's all there is to it nothing fancy no fancy airbrush lube no fancy cl uh, airbrush cleaners isopropyl alcohol for acrylics you can flush it through the water if it's a water-based acrylic first and then clean it with ipa uh, white spirits if it's enamel paint and cellulose or lacquer thinners if it's cellulose or lacquer paint simple as that so I hope that was useful and thank you for watching.